All right, Craig here on the third floor. We're going to paint up uh, one of the main, or two of the main miniatures from the Gotham City uh, Chronicles game. And uh, it's a good, uh, good uh, skin technique um, for any anything, you know, barbarians, fantasy figures. Uh, we're going to use a combination to start off with of Shadow Flesh and Base Flesh from AK Interactive. Uh, they put out a really nice uh, skin set. Um, you want you want to check out. I like I like these paints. So I'm going to get a dollop of both, and we're going to start by mixing them, and then we're going to base all of the skin areas uh, just using this Citadel layer brush, and that's a little bit of flow improver. So we get them mixed up. And you'll notice that uh, I always thin my paints on the fly, so I keep my flow improver separate. And then thin as I go. And then we'll just cover all the flesh areas um, with this uh, red flesh tone. By the way, if you don't have this AK Interactive paints, um, any reddish dark flesh tone will work. What I'm really going to go for here is some very stark contrast in the skin, which uh, is great for a kind of a fantasy cartoonish style. Now, sometimes I'll start with the mid-tones and I will then paint in the uh, darker tones. Uh, for this cartoonish style, I like to just go ahead and start with the dark tones. Um, so. Like I said, there's two of these, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing and get uh, on the Venom version of the Bane. We're going to get all these flesh parts uh, painted up with the same uh, undertone. You don't have to worry about being super neat here because uh, you know if you spill over on some of the other areas, you're going to end up painting over them anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, because of how thin the paints uh, the paint is as I'm painting, um, so there's going to be areas that I need to um, add a second layer, which is uh, not a big deal. It gives you a nice uh, smooth undercoat as opposed to you know doing a thicker paint, and you don't lose any detail. Now here, he has gloves on, and I wanted them to be fingerless gloves. Uh, so I'm going ahead and creating my own fingerless gloves just by painting some flesh at the fingertips. same on the regular version of this these miniatures are uh, kind of a hard are the uh, you know the PVC plastic uh, that you get with board games but I was really impressed with the level of detail um, on all of these models uh, this, is, this is a Kickstarter game that's put up by uh, monolith games all right so now we're gonna kind of lighten this up a little bit so we're going to use a dollop of the uh, shadow flesh and then two parts of the base flesh. We'll get those mixed up and then we're going to add in um, the light flesh to mix with it. So first I start off by basically creating a lighter version of my base coat because it's got more base flesh instead of a one to one, it's a two to one. Then we take this light flesh, and we add that, and then you'll notice I'm gonna create kind of a gradation by not mixing all of it, but just pieces of it. So this is gonna give me a range of flesh colors to work from, from the pure light flesh into that base mixture I had. And because I'm using a wet palette and then I'm thinning my paints, um, it gives me uh, a lot of flexibility. So now we're going to go in. 
let's go ahead and paint over all of the areas, but leaving the recessed parts so that that original base coat is, is shown through. And you're going to notice that the contrast is very high um, between my first color and my second color that I'm applying now. We're going to use a glaze later to make those transitions a little less stark. But for now, I'm going to map these out and get that color. And you'll notice I'm going to really kind of play around a little bit with how light it is based off of where I'm painting and because of how I have that mixture available on my palette I can go lighter or darker pretty quick just based on what part of the paint mixture I'm using and that'll determine how much light flesh is involved. Okay, you can start seeing things coming together now a little bit, now that we can see that contrast. And again, in certain areas where our, that contrast isn't high enough, I'll do a second coat, adding a little bit more of that light flesh when I load the brush. Same to the non-venom version of Bane, same idea. You notice I'm using a pretty large size brush. I think this is a, a zero or a one. And uh, because I maintain a good tip, I can uh, quickly go from light detail using just the tip to a broader stroke using more of the side of the brush. Okay. So now we're going to do more of just the light flesh. So I grab a little bit of the flow improver. And now we're going to go to that next level up. But you'll notice that I'm not completely covering the previous layer. So I'm leaving behind both the first and the second layers. And this is going to create again a very strong contrast, which we're going to soften a little bit later with a glaze. But it's really going to get that muscle definition to pop. Okay, same thing on the second version of the model. 
again, you'll notice that it, sometimes I go back over it more than once because again of the level of thinning of the paint that I'm doing and boy, you can really see how that contrast is in place now. I also get a sense of the cartoonish style that I'm going for. All right, so this is adding a little bit more of that base flesh in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some of the Vallejo glaze medium. So this is gonna be a very, very thinned version of that base flesh. And you'll notice once I mix it that it really creates a, a thinned translucent version of this. And now I'm gonna hit all of the hard transitions with this glaze. When I say hit it, I mean I'm going to glaze up into that highlight. And what'll happen is when it dries, it creates an, a softer transition. Because it's semi-transparent with the glaze medium. And the one tip I'll give you as far as glazing is don't judge how well the glaze is going until the glaze dries. Uh, it'll be, you won't get the full effect until you see it dried. So you have to be a little patient and you can decide whether you need to glaze it more than once, once it dries, but uh, once you've laid down a coat, don't mess with it until you uh, have allowed it to dry so you can really see how well the glaze is working. The other thing you'll notice too is that I pick up, I load the brush with, the, with this glaze mix, and then I let the initial dump of, of it to come off the brush onto my thumb uh, so that I don't get the glaze everywhere as soon as it touches the model. Okay, so now those transitions aren't quite as, as stark because we've you know created that glaze transition. So now we're gonna get a higher detail brush and now we're gonna use uh, Highlight Flesh from AK Interactive, a very, very light, light flesh tone. And now we're gonna do our final highlight and I'm gonna do it by just creating lines on these muscles. Now, you'll notice to get a precise line, I kind of do the stroke above the model. Um, and then I slowly lower my hand until the paint starts to fall. And you can see me do it several times. So you'll see me moving up and down and no paint comes down and I'm slowly bringing my brush tip closer to the model. And as soon as I see the, the uh, paint leave the brush, I stop lowering it and that allows me to get very precise thin lines. So I'm literally just creating stripes. That's how I'm doing the final highlight here. And that's gonna really give the um, illusion of muscles and fingernails. There, now you can really see the effect that that gives. Okay, so there's a way to do kind of a cartoonish style uh, flesh. Uh, we really only use four colors in a glazed medium and uh, it creates a really, really uh, kind of neat effect um, and it's a flesh that'll really stand out. Thanks for watching.